I just rode a horse up a mountain in Guatemala. <laughs> I'm on the peak of Volcano Pacaya. The day before, I was in a village called Labor de Falla on the outskirts of the city Chimaltenango. After a 10-minute walk to the edge of the village, myself and a group of college students met a family of three women, a widowed grandmother, a divorced mother, and a teenage daughter. Their home was quaint, concrete floors, wooden walls, metal roofs. They didn't have much, but they welcomed us so warmly. We gave them two gifts, leaving us and them in tears. The first gift was a water filter that produces cleaner water than what we drink here in the States. It lasts 10 years, too. The effect of this gift was profound on this family of women. Now they won't have to worry about illness from drinking unsanitary water. But the second gift was why we were really there. This gift was something I learned about my freshman year of college here at St. Norbert. And at that time, I was a very different person. Show of hands, who here is a people pleaser? In high school, that was me. All I cared about was people liking me. I did nice things for others, but I was driven by a personal motive. I wanted people to think I was nice. I changed my personality depending on who I was around. I thought my worth as a person was rooted in what people thought of me. I would lie, undermine my own values, put others or myself down, anything to be more liked. Because if enough people thought I was a good person, then I'd find fulfillment, right? Wrong. Turns out, this reputation I worked so tirelessly building backfired. In a way, I was building a pedestal to stand on so that people would see that I was good. <laughs> I built it nice and tall, but as I stood on it, I realized that the Daniel people saw wasn't the real me. I felt like a fraud. As I continued to compare myself with others, I felt unfulfilled. I thought if I worked hard enough and enough people liked me, I'd be set. I was wrong. That was me heading into college. Then came my first involvement fair here at St. Norbert, where every student org known to man tries to market themselves to the new class. I was looking for a place to call home. In the sea of people, I happened upon a group called Crew. Crew is a Christian organization on college campuses all over the world. They promoted weekly meetings, eh, <laughs> community, hmm, and Bible study groups, ding ding. I felt ready to explore my personal faith more, and for whatever reason, I thought a Bible study group could be what I needed. So I went to the first Crew Bible study meeting, and what I learned absolutely bewildered me. Here are a few things that stuck out to me. I learned that getting into heaven is not about what I do or how hard I work. What? That was what motivated me to build that metaphorical pedestal in the first place. But the things I do, my good works, aren't good enough to guarantee me a place in heaven. But I also learned I can have a personal relationship with God. And that relationship, in my understanding, is a guarantee that I can make it to heaven. Entering into that relationship isn't about earning it through doing good things. It's about faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. How about a little historical context? When Jesus was alive on this earth 2,000 years ago, he said that he was the way to heaven. When he died on the cross, he bore the burden of death so that those who believe in him could have life. He paid for my mistakes for me by his death so that I wouldn't have to pay for them myself. He did it for everyone, and he did it because he loves us, loves me. I really find that powerful. Another thing that stuck out to me was this. All I need to do to enter into a relationship with God is to turn toward Jesus, knowing that he paid for my mistakes for me. Then and only then can I have a relationship with God and have a secure seat in heaven. I find that really powerful too. But the biggest aha moment for me was that he offers it freely. It's a gift. All I need to do to accept that gift is believe. Belief, faith. It's not about what I do. It's about what he did. 
powerful. After hearing all this stuff from the crew Bible study meeting, I didn't understand. But I was intrigued and I kept going back. Let me be clear. I had doubts. Why did God want to have a relationship with me? I didn't understand, but I was eager to learn more. Doubts are okay. They're natural. Proof that you're trying to understand and that you're thinking critically. Imagine life as a puzzle. Over time, we put pieces together, and as we do so, we understand more and more. As time went by, I, slowly, started putting pieces together one at a time. I became more involved with crew over the next year and a half, and I came to accept the gift that God offers. I chose to enter into a relationship with God. I still had doubts. Heck, I still have doubts today. There are times I still struggle in my faith. My puzzle still has many pieces missing, but now I feel assurance that my final destination is heaven because of my relationship with God. Little by little, as I became more comfortable in this new relationship, I felt a weight off my shoulders. I didn't have to work tirelessly to be good enough anymore. I started reading the Bible regularly. However, as I grew in my faith, I still compared myself to others like I did in high school. There was one guy in particular, I'll call him Carl, that I really compared myself to. Carl wasn't new to faith like I was. Carl understood the concepts I struggled with and I wrestled with. I could never see myself being like Carl. From my view, he was leaps and bounds ahead of me. But as I got to know Carl better, we strengthened our relationship and we were vulnerable with each other. We confided in each other in an area we both struggled something I battled for nine years, pornography. Today, Carl and I are accountability partners, and we've helped each other to quit our pornography addictions. Carl isn't perfect, and I'm not either. Looking back, it was like a reversal of my high school experience. I had put Carl on a pedestal thinking he was perfect, but he wasn't. It's best not to put anyone on a pedestal. Despite our mistakes, and trust me, we still make them, Carl and I understand that God still loves both of us. <sighs> okay, back to my Guatemala trip. I almost didn't go. Initially, I felt I wasn't at a place in my faith to go on a mission trip. It wasn't until the week before the registration deadline that I felt a personal calling to go, and I listened. I made my decision to go on the last possible day. I was scared, unsure, and anxious, but hopeful that I might experience God firsthand. On the trip, I'd get to give families clean water, and each family would have the chance to hear about a relationship with Jesus. That's the second gift. I'd get to share with them that you can't earn your way to heaven. I'd share that you need someone to meet you where you're at, and the only one who can do that is Jesus. God showed up for me when I was in Guatemala. When I talked with those three women, I shared what I had found in my relationship with Jesus. That day, they came to accept the gift of heaven too, just like I did. As I talked to them, I was speaking, but it felt like it wasn't coming from me. I felt God's presence. God showed up. Despite my fear and anxiety, Despite me being so new to my faith, I was able to humbly and excitedly share with those women about my relationship with God. I shared that I'm not perfect, but because of God's grace, because of Jesus, I don't have to be. Seeing the joy in their eyes, seeing their reactions to Jesus, to our gifts, it is a memory I will cherish for the rest of my life. I'm so grateful that I could experience it. My relationship with God absolutely changed my life. I've personally experienced God. I felt him working when I was in Guatemala. Just five days ago, I returned from another mission trip, this time to El Salvador, and I felt him working there too. I want you all to know it's never too late to find refuge in something other than yourself. Some of you may have doubts, and that's okay. Maybe my story can be a puzzle piece for you. With every piece I place in my own puzzle, I realize even more that I don't have to be perfect. 
My worth isn't rooted in what others think anymore. It's rooted in my relationship with God. And that's the relationship I didn't see coming. Thank you. Let's give it up for Daniel.